Hello, and welcome to Waffles RC. Here at Waffles RC, I like to build all my own RCs or piece them together using cheap parts off of, well, wherever I can find them. My goal with this video is to show people that want to get into the RC world but don't feel like buying all the ones that are off the shelf, same ones that you see all over the place, that you can piece all these things together or just completely custom build one all on your own. I'm also going to do a walkthrough on each one of these RCs, show you how I put them together or built them, whichever the case may be. And that one right there, as you can see, is a current project and we'll get into that later as well. So my goal with this video is to show everybody or anybody who watches this that there are other options out there than buying an off the shelf RTR. You just have to put a little bit more work into it, but I found that it has made it much cheaper and you get very unique builds as compared to most of the other ones that you see. Now there are plenty of other YouTubers out there that have their own unique RCs and they build them a little different, but I have found in the crawler world that everybody sticks to kind of a norm. Everybody wants to do competitions or have the lightest crawlers out there. But I've also ran into a lot of people that I've talked to that just want something to go out with their kids or by themselves and just have fun, which is where I aim to build all my RCs. I'll start by getting this one out of the way. that in a bit. I want to start off with this one. So this one was my first RC crawler. It's a Traxxas TRX4. It has been very used and abused and I've upgraded it with quite a number of parts. Longer shocks, bigger tires, did a custom front bumper which is very inconvenient but it looks cool. So when I first started building it I was watching YouTube videos and seeing all the big names, name brands, all that stuff. So I bought quite a number of those parts. And it turned out pretty well, but it was quite expensive. So even with all the expensive parts, as you can see, even with all of those, most of those aren't really very expensive anymore because I've upgraded them to cheaper stuff, which I found a lot of parts on Amazon. So this one has been extensively upgraded with all the suspension found that by my own fault it is not waterproof so you know heads up on that it says waterproof you should actually make sure it stays waterproof read the instructions it helps sometimes so after I got this one to a good spot where I was really happy with it it performed really well I wanted to build a second one but I wanted something completely different just uh move that out of there. so then I built that monstrosity so when I built this one, or was starting to build it, I wanted wider axles, really tall suspension. I wanted this mud truck. Well, found plenty of lift kits for stuff like this. Made it taller, you could fit bigger tires. But those are six inch tall tires, and it didn't give me the height, the height that I wanted. So that's when I went on to Amazon and started finding all of this cheaper stuff. Even though this is all cheaper, at least, than some of the big name brand stuff that you can get out there. It's actually not very bad quality for what it is. Now the biggest thing that a lot of people said when you get these differentials, the biggest complaints that I found were you had to take them apart and you had to Loctite them and all this stuff. Well, 10 minutes, you can do all of that. You just take it all apart, put Loctite on all the bolts, put some grease inside there, bam. This thing has had no issues with these axles. Now for the electronics, I did go with a name brand. Did good transmission, good engine, at least I've had really great luck with them. ESC, this one is not a crawler by any means. It actually sucks at it. But I have discovered that it is quite universal in doing things that a mud truck RC should not do, which includes using these. So 
So I made this whole chassis, the whole frame, welded up together just with some metal at the local hardware store. Got it to how I wanted it. And got it built up and tried to make it clean up and work as good as possible. But as you can tell, still break stuff. But the good part about buying cheap stuff is that it doesn't hurt your wallet as much when you have to replace it or fix it. I'll get to that later on with that. So after I built this one, ignore that. That's when I decided I wanted a tow vehicle. Something to tow all my RCs because, well, why not? So this one is the same theory. Built my own frame for it. Painted it, got some cheap axles on it off of Amazon. Don't know the name brand, don't really care. Made my own suspension other than the links, obviously. Had to buy those. And I built the bed. Did not build any of the stuff that's on it. But they are, there's lots of stuff. And it is pretty cool. And it's got a functional rear winch and a functional front winch as well. So this one, same theory. I have the battery in there. Got very expensive, you know, battery tie downs, zip ties for the front weights, zip ties. Who needs Velcro? You got zip ties. It's not going anywhere. Got the motor, transmission. This one has dig and a two speed. And when it comes to the electronics, I found that a lot of people buy the very expensive stuff. And yes, I do have Traxxas batteries. They've been working really good for me, so I just run those. But, like, these little servos. I got a pack of them, four of them, for like 20 bucks off of Amazon. And one of them didn't work. Okay, so I have three more. And I used two. Now I still have one spare. So that's what I'm trying to show in this video, is that you can buy cheap stuff and still have something that works really well. So obviously, if you're gonna have a tow vehicle, you're gonna need a trailer. So, with the trailer, just took a bunch of metal, weld it all up, make it look like a car carrier with spare tires for that truck because I only I bought them in packs of four so that's what you have to do so even though it's not perfectly scale it does do the job of hauling RC's which as you can see right here it does pretty well the only thing it doesn't do is turn but that's just because there's lockers in the front and all the weights on the back and the back is locked. So of course it's not going to want to turn. And one thing to take note of also is with these custom builds like this, you can't really worry about making mistakes because that's how you learn how to put all these things together. Even same thing for this one. You get the stuff that you need, hope that it's the right stuff, and then you learn. Go from there. So this one in particular, I made a mistake while building the frame on that one. <laughs> and there's the mistake. I made the frame, had it all mounted up, went to put the body on it, and discovered this part right here was not tall enough. Yeah. Did all the welding, had everything mounted, had the drop transfer case mounted in there, made plates for it, all sorts of stuff, got it really far, then discovered that the body sat too low for how big of a tire that I got. So then I had to make a whole nother frame and make this part taller to get the axles down further. And that's not the only mistake that I've made. This truck right here was also version two, at least on the bed. So there's the first flatbed, as you can see. Made a mistake, but went pretty far. Got everything mounted. So I made these boxes with way too thick of metal, made it super heavy, and I measured it to the thickness of this body. So I made this one half inch wider 
and now the tires stick in at least this inside tire sticks in a little bit so it looks a little bit more normal but still crazy exactly how i wanted so as you can see it is a trailer and you just drive up on it and then fall off of it but you get the idea it's a trailer it carries my rc's so this is another vehicle that it is a good example of make it your own with super cheap parts so this one bought the body this is the body that i wanted and i made the roll cage and i use it that's what it's for the thing does really well haven't had any issues with it other than just like normal buy the cheap differentials you gotta take them apart put loctite on all the bolts which i forgot to do and this particular hub came apart oh, there now you can see it that hub came apart or the portal came apart but to save a couple hundred dollars you use some loctite take it all apart get to know it that's the best part figure out how it works loctite everything put some grease in there and bam you're off to the races or the rocks so also with this one made my own frame for it have not painted it yet but i wanted a tube style frame which is just some metal bar from a hardware store had some shocks on it off of amazon cheap wheels and tires nothing really super special but as you can tell it gets used it's cheaper than doing it off the shelf and then doing upgrades from there. So the next two I wanna show are the ones that I've pieced together with all random parts off of Amazon. So both of these are just pieced together, nothing really custom fabricated. That one has some plates right here that I made. But besides that, everything was just bolted together of random pieces off of Amazon. So we'll get to this one last. This one is probably one of my best performing RCs out of all of them, at least on the crawling side. So this one, just some frame rails. I think they're based off of SEX 10 2. Got the frame rails. That one has the same frame rails, just red. It's the only difference between them, but they both have the exact same frame. Then I got a motor, transmission, transfer case. I did make a battery plate for it because well, I needed it. But everything else is just off-brand, nothing super big name brand, and just piece this thing together. Which that's actually the point I'm trying to make with showing these RCs and making this video is to show these are much cheaper than buying in my opinion, than buying an RTR. Because you can piece them all together, you get metal, metal, it over, you get metal differentials, metal control arms, sliders, all the stuff that you need as an upgrade from a RTR. So you're skipping the whole buy the RTR, then upgrade it by just piecing it together and making what you want. And that's what I want to show people. I'll show that you can get whatever body you want, slap it onto a frame, maybe make some stuff, or you can even buy battery trays. I didn't, but you can buy battery trays that would fit right inside here. That's where I think in the crawler RC world, it's missing people that just want to go out, have some fun. They're not trying to do competitions. They're not trying to do any crazy stuff with full scale builds or anything like that. It's literally just, I want an off-road RC, go out and have fun with. And instead of spending $600, then upgrading, you can spend $400 and have it all upgraded. You just have to be able to put in the work to take everything apart, at least the differentials, Loctite everything, put grease in it. Obviously I did not Loctite everything, but you know, you live and you learn. This one I went a little crazier with. It's got a nice body. It's a hard body. It's not a Lexan. The part that I went crazy on is I put rear steer on it. And yes, it still needs work because it rubs really bad. So this one was the same as the Toyota. Got some axles off of Amazon. These things had to take them apart, Loctite everything, some coilovers, frame, and just piece it all together to make something work. And it does 
pretty good. I haven't had it out in the real world, but testing it at work, it's been doing pretty good. And yes, it has some issues like the drive shaft hitting and the front tires hitting the body. And well, the fact that that's not mounted yet, but it's all part of building these things. That one has had no issues whatsoever, as you can tell by all the water crossings. scratches, you know, stuff like that. It's been doing really good. Tow truck. It does perfectly fine. I do want to build another trailer. And if people are interested, I can show piecing together one like this or building a crazy one like that. So on that basis, current project that I'm working on is this right here. So eventually what this thing is going to be is going to be another crawler using the same cheap axles that I'll have to take apart, grease everything up, Loctite everything. But for right now, I've got the same cheap frame rails for SEX 10 2 off of Amazon. Did make my own plates because I am mounting these things, which eventually will be adjustable suspension. Because, well, why not? And to go with it, of course, will be a Cadillac body. And because I'm weird, it's gonna have those tires. Might be a little too big, but we'll make it work. But this is what I wanna get across to everybody. Is you can build something that's weird, outlandish, it's not your typical vehicle. You can experiment, have some fun, build it for cheap. Like these servos right here are just regular steering servos, nothing fancy. Got a pack of four of them for like 30 bucks. So I'll have one for each corner. Got to work on those ones. I already got the suspension on, front coils. Got those two mounted. Nothing's super permanent. And it's taking a while to make it, obviously. So they have systems that are like this that are very expensive. So I was just trying to experiment, see if I can make one of my own. I want to show people with my channel that you can build whatever you want, whether it's pieced together, if you have a welder, you can weld together your own. You just build something different, build something that's out there. You don't need to stick to the mold of super light. Like if you're not going out for competitions, why do you need the best crawler out there? You just want to go out and have some fun and use one of those, or you can use any of them, except for that one, can't crawl. Neither can this one because the suspension is so stiff to be able to carry the trailer. But that one does really well and it's all pieced together. It's what I would consider upgraded and what I would consider to be half the cost of buying an RTR and then upgrading it from there. Prime example, wife broke an axle shaft on this one. So snapped an axle shaft inside there. With most of the other ones, if you have to buy a new axle shaft, they're pretty expensive. Now, if you get cheap axles off of Amazon, you get a whole bag of parts. So not only did I get new axle shafts, but I got new portals, new portal gears, front portals, axle shafts, steering, got all that, or basically for the same price as one axle shaft for one of the big name brands. Now these axles, for two of them, were about a hundred bucks, not very expensive. But if you look at the big name brands, they're like three or $400 for one. So you have to imagine what would you rather break? Cause they're gonna break, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter whether if it's the most expensive one or a cheap one, they're all gonna break. If you push these things hard enough, they will break. So do you wanna break them and not break the bank to get new parts or buy the big name brand and say that you have the name brand? That's how I look at it. So if this video does get out to more than, you know, the 14 people that are actually subscribed to it, I will piece together one similar to this. I'll obviously do a different body, but I'll show you step by step how to get all these parts, how to piece them all together and get a fun RC that has upgraded parts for half the price. And you can just go out and have fun and do weird things with them because why stick to having a mud truck that's only a mud truck and an RC crawler that is also a submarine, as I've found. So just let me know if anybody is interested in watching me piece together one of these things. You can show where I get all the parts, which I've already said, I get everything pretty much off of Amazon. It'll take some time. We can piece together one that's pretty much similar to this. 
or we can go a little bit more complicated with something like this. But if people are interested, then I'd like to show how you can build one of these things for a lot cheaper and have a good time, especially if you're not planning on doing competitions or shows or anything like that. You don't need the nicest, the lightest, the most expensive. So let me know if anybody's interested in me putting one of these together or actually filming the process of putting this weird thing together and see how that one turns out. Hope everyone has a great day. And from Waffles RC, with my weird collection, we'll just keep adding to it and have a bunch of fun with them.